I want to talk a little bit about the way that lies function in relationships and what it does to us when we're lied to in different ways. The term gaslighting has become kind of ubiquitous. You see it all around now. And I think sometimes it's used to describe what it originally meant and sometimes it's used generally to talk about lying. But gaslighting, if you've ever wondered, that term comes from a 1938 play which was turned into a 1944 movie. And it was about a man who was systematically driving his wife mad by turning down the gaslight and then lying about it to her so that she started to doubt her own sense of reality and accusing her of taking things that she hadn't taken them. And really she starts to feel crazy because he's saying things systematically that are not true and she stops believing in her own reality. She stops believing herself. Later in this service, I'm gonna show a clip from that movie. And I'll warn you before I do that if you grew up with a parent like this or you've been in a relationship like this, you might not want to watch it because as old as it is, as exaggerated it is, that way that people can really torment you by saying things that are not true until you start to doubt your own truth it is profoundly, profoundly upsetting for any of us. You know, recently I was reading a study that it's very common when someone is having an affair, and this was about men in relationships with women, so I don't know if it generalizes to other genders and couples, but this was about men in relationships to women who are having affairs themselves started accusing their wives and girlfriends of having affairs and started being very jealous and possessive of their wives and girlfriends, who in many cases are completely bewildered by this. But in fact, it's a kind of projection that serves in a way to erode the confidence of the person who's being accused so that they stop functioning well, they stop functioning as a whole person, as a believable, trustworthy agent of truth and it can justify the decision to leave that relationship because now you're with somebody who's broken. So gaslighting is a systematic denial of reality in such a way that the person whose reality you're denying begins to doubt that they know what's true. Now, this language of gaslighting has been used a lot about the current president of the United States. People say he's gaslighting in the way that he lies. And I want to say that I think he's lying, but I don't think he's gaslighting because so many of the things that he says are absolutely demonstrably false. You know, what the man is doing in that movie is he's saying things that she can't prove are false, so she, she can't tell herself, no, he's lying. Whereas with our president in the United States, we know he's lying. He knows he's lying. He knows we know he's lying. He's lying. What he's doing is bullying us. He's asserting that things that are untrue are true. And in essence, he's saying, I am the king of reality. I get to define reality as I see fit. And I don't care about facts because I'm the king. I've been really helped in this analysis by Misha Gessen, who is a journalist who watched Putin come to power in Russia and now writes a lot about the similarities. And it helped me so much to learn, oh, he, you know, when he says something like, the crowds at the inauguration were this, and everyone can look at pictures and see that they were that. That's not gaslighting. That is bullying. That is asserting that his power allows him to say whatever he wants and we have to live with it. And for those in the United States, we are living with it. We might be fighting it, we might be resisting it, we might be ignoring it, we might be choosing to relate to it in a lot of ways, but that he is dominating the world with lies to bully us, to keep us in line, different from gaslighting. 
So I think that both of these kinds of lies are very hurtful to us, but gaslighting is particularly interesting to me because I think it has social dimensions. I think many of us are gaslighted and our self-esteem is eroded by cultural, social lies that are told that we start to believe because they're told so often and they are harder to disprove. For instance, if you work hard and do what's right, you will get wealthy, you will get enough, you won't be poor. Statistics completely say that that is not true. It is very difficult to leave poverty, very difficult. It is much easier to slide down than to move up. And yet, over and over, we hear this story of pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, and we hear those rare exceptions to the rule, and we say, something's wrong with me if I can't do that. It becomes a cultural narrative that's a kind of gaslighting or one that certainly has impacted me my whole life. If you go on a diet, you'll lose weight. We hear that all the time. If you're fat, you need to go on a diet and lose weight. And yet the statistics don't bear that out. In fact, mostly what they show is that those of us who have gone on diets, and I speak for myself since we were young, yo-yo up and in fact end up wrecking our metabolisms and end up much larger in part from those diets. But still, we believe if we find the right diet, we will still lose weight because we're told that over and over and we're taught to blame ourselves. If you are worthy, you will be loved. You must be worthy to be loved. Well, really, really. Many of us who are in loving relationships and who aren't in loving relationships are equally worthy of love. It's not because people are better in some way that they have a partner. Call it luck, call it chance, call it what you want to call it. Some people are in relationships, some people wish they were and they, and they are not. Some people wish they were not and they are. But everyone is worthy of love and everyone, let's face it, is pretty unlovable sometimes. Speaking only about me and all my closest friends and yet we're loved. We're loved in all kinds of ways. So these kinds of gaslighting stories that tell us we're not worthy unless, we're not worthy unless we have a certain amount of money. We're not worthy unless we look a certain way. We're not worthy unless somebody tells us they love us. We're not worthy. That is a kind of gaslighting that capitalism runs on. Because people who feel like we're fundamentally fine aren't going to go buy a bunch of stuff and spend a bunch of money and need to fill that empty hole. That empty hole is created through a form of gaslighting that I believe capitalism is founded on. Capitalism tells us over and over and over that we're not who we are born knowing. Every kid knows they're fantastic. And then it's systematically taken out of us culturally, systematically over and over again. No, you're not. You have bad breath. You have hair in your ears. You have so many things can be wrong with us. You know, you have ring around the collar. You have whatever you have that makes you need to go buy something or do something. Somehow change yourself to be good enough. So here's the truth underneath all that gaslighting. No matter who you are, no matter how you look, no matter what kind of relationship or family you're in or want to be in or used to be in, you are worthy of love just the way you are. You are perfectly wonderful just the way you are. Of course, that doesn't mean you don't want to do things and improve yourself. We all do. But let's do it from a place of because it would be a great thing and not because we are slime if we don't. That voice that tells us over and over we're not good enough, that's the gaslighting voice. We don't need to listen to that. Whoever proclaims that they're king of reality and tries to tell us that, let's just say, no, I'm not. I am worthy now. 